May God be with you. Welcome to Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. I am grateful that we can be together, gathered by the Holy Spirit. A special welcome to any visitors we have here this morning um, and those, um, those of us who are online. Um, it is the season of Epiphany, and um, in this season we are taking the posture of how do we respond to the revelation of God in Jesus What is our intention? What is our purpose and our response? And today Jesus preaches his famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, otherwise known as the Beatitudes, and everything kind of gets turned on its head. Um, And uh, we learn that God's priorities are not always our priorities. And so what does that mean as we live into um, this season and our place um, in this in God's story that continues to unfold. Um, we are honored to welcome Beth McGrew King to the pulpit this morning while Pastor Beth is out sick. Um, many of you know that Beth, you know Beth in her operational role here at Mount Olivet, but did you know in addition to those talents, she also has her Master's in Divinity and she relishes in preaching and teaching whenever she gets a chance. And so, lucky us. Um, I'm so grateful for her word this morning and uh, the great gift we have at Mount Olivet of hearing multiple voices uh, this season. So now I invite you to stand in body or in spirit for our call to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. I pause for our own reflection now. Holy One, source of life. We confess that we are wrapped up in sin, cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another and renewed in your love. Amen. God speaks, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy creates a way. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you to open your hymnal to page 98 in the front part as we sing our setting one liturgy. We pray together. God of surprising compassion, may we be open to the wonder of discovering you with us and with our neighbor, especially in the places we did not expect or want to look. Help us follow your invitation to love, justice, mercy, and making peace. When we are weary, Remind us of your faithfulness. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, 
saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, Allison, and grace and peace to all of you gathered here this morning and to those of you joining in online. Robin Wall Kimmer, in her book Braiding Sweetgrass, talks about pecan trees. They don't produce a crop every year. Instead, they scan their environment to gauge the needs of the season. And in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, in my aunt and uncle's backyard, 2021 was a bumper year for pecans. I had visited that November on my way back from my dad's wedding, hoping to see my grandmother on my way back to Minnesota. We arrived in the evening, and the next morning, as Jason, Amy, and I were about 15 minutes from going up to see her, we learned my grandma had died that morning. And while we had originally planned to come back to Minnesota right after visiting, suddenly we had this expanse of time with my Aunt Donna meeting her in my grandmother's memory care room before the funeral home came, staying in town the week before the funeral, just being present with each other. My mom, Donna's sister, died when I was in middle school, and of all the people to be in town and present for the loss of my grandma, her mom, it was us, her beloved sister, Katie's kids. There is some profound sacredness in the timing of that for all of us. And in the shock of processing, we, my aunt, Amy, Jason, and I, wandered around their backyard picking up pecan after pecan after pecan from the ground, filling sack after sack after sack, like a pecan Easter egg hunt. And every time we thought we had found them all, more would appear over and over again for the entire week. And whenever I see pecans now, I remember my aunt and my grandmother and this abundant generosity of the pecan trees, and the comfort of being together for this awful and sad week. And there's a fondness for this sacred time together, even as I miss my grandmother. And I think there's something of this complexity when we talk about the Beatitudes, the way blessing, pain, justice, and making peace are tangled. The Beatitudes called that because of the Latin word beati for blessing, marks the beginning of one of Jesus' most famous sections of teaching called the Sermon on the Mount. And this section is more or less Jesus' intro to the whole sermon. And because this passage is so familiar to me, I can take for granted how countercultural, how challenging to the status quo it was and continues to be. Not many of these things sound like the kinds of things we naturally wish for ourselves or our kids. And to preach on these famous blessings in the wake of news this past week of shootings in California last weekend, along with the release of news of Tyree Nichols' brutal murder in Memphis, feels daunting if I'm honest. These blessings are not a tool to be used against those who are hurting or being harmed to keep them placid for a future maybe. They are an invitation for a beloved community to live in a radically flipped upside down world and in so doing, to taste and see God's love. And the people gathered around Jesus saw glimpses of these promises in action as Jesus began teaching and ministering in Galilee. 
And here in the Beatitudes, Jesus promises comfort to those who mourn, living out those promises from Isaiah 61. And word of Jesus spread. People came in droves. And having seen these crowds, Jesus goes up the mountain. And after he sits down, the disciples come to him. And given Matthew's frequent references to Jewish scriptures, maybe we're meant to recall stories of Moses going up to Mount Sinai for the covenant and Ten Commandments back in Exodus. Might this encounter with Jesus be meant to bring about something like that radiance of Moses back in Exodus? Maybe there is something about going up away from the crowds and demands, resting and getting some perspective that gives room to hear these teaching of Jesus. Where might we need that sort of spaciousness to give ourselves some margin to let our scripts about God, where God is and what really matters be flipped? And perhaps as Jesus speaks to the disciples, the crowds gather in closer and settle around them to listen. Maybe as the disciples watch people coming in, these Beatitudes remind them of actual people in the crowd. And perhaps this is an invitation to see the crowds with their many needs and demands with a more compassionate filter. Instead of only seeing the inconvenience or the heaviness of what's needed, to remember them as people beloved of God and connected. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There's a range of interpretations on this one, from literally destitute to brokenhearted. And I wonder if there is shared overlap that in just being awake to our neighbors, the world, and ourselves, we recognize our shared frailty and dependence on each other. To be alive is to be supported and connected by so many other things, whether we can recognize it in the moment or not. And perhaps to be poor in spirit is to be awake and minding the gap between what is and what should be. And in noticing and tending to that, God shows up. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And thinking of the loss of my grandmother and that time with my aunt, I find Amy Jo Levine's reflection on this blessing poignant. To mourn is to say, I loved this person, and I desperately miss this person. And a heart that knows how to grieve is a heart that knows how to love. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Inheriting the earth involves a responsibility to care for it and not just plunder it. And perhaps the one who can listen and not lord it over others are most suited for this responsibility. And maybe there is something in this humble in-it-togetherness, and not just for ourselves, that leads to the hunger and thirst for justice. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be filled. In the wake of this week, I needed to hear this as a promise, that that hunger for justice will be met. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Mercy does not eliminate a need for justice. Mercy sets aside the demand for injury for injury, knowing that this loop would never end. And I think our capacity for mercy is linked to our capacity for gratitude for seeing the ridiculous abundance of grace heaped upon our lives and remembering the ways that we have been held and supported. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. For me, Cole Arthur Riley's description of wonder in her book, This Here Flesh, feels like purity of heart. She writes, Wonder requires a person not to forget themselves, but to feel themselves so acutely that their connectedness to every created thing comes into focus. In sacred awe, we are part of the story. And she goes on to note, practicing wonder is a powerful tool against despair. It works nearly the same muscles as hope, in that you find yourself believing in goodness and beauty, even when the evidence gives you every reason to believe that goodness and beauty are void. In wonder, we see sacred connection. And maybe that sacred connection moves us towards peacemaking. And peacemaking is different than harmony or agreement. Peacemaking requires justice. And I can't help but ask if that leads to the next blessing. Blessed are those who are persecuted for justice's sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Throughout history, we've seen what happens to people who lead in calling for justice. 
Martin Luther King, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Jesus, and countless others. And while I'm not advocating suffering, I am curious about the taste of justice in the kingdom that is so compelling and moving that speaking up is worth the risk. And I find it interesting that this blessing loops back to the poor in spirit, both share that the kingdom of heaven belongs to them, as though all these blessings might be a spiral that is looped through again and again. These blessings can feel heavy and burdensome, like something we try and fail to live up to, or like, come on, Jesus, we are tired. But I'm starting to see them a little differently. Blessings are joy, and the words of S.A.S. Roske in his book Inciting Joy are imagined to be the result of some accomplishment or acquisition. But what happens if joy is not separate from pain? What if joy is not only entangled with pain or suffering or sorrow, but is also what emerges from how we care for each other through these things? What if joy is what effloresces from us as we help each other carry our heartbreaks? And he goes on to say, my hunch is that joy is an ember for a precursor to wild and unpredictable and transgressive and unboundaried solidarity. And that solidarity might incite further joy, which might incite further solidarity. My hunch is that joy emerging from our common sorrow, which does not necessarily mean we share the same sorrows, but that we in common sorrow might draw us together. It might depolarize us and deatomize us enough that we can consider what in common we love. And it's why I think of joy, which gets us to love, as being a practice of survival. When hearing the Beatitudes, remember the joy and care in this, that living in this way is not just for some future heavenly reward, but that living and caring for each other in this way is tasting an abundance of life in the present too. It's an opportunity. And yes, it is risky and likely painful, but wholeheartedness is. To live wholeheartedly is risky. It will take you to people and places you never thought you would go. Your heart will likely get broken, and it will likely upend what is comfortable and routine. But there will also be joy and community and wholeness there too. When we might be tempted to yield to overwhelm, to cynicism, to numbness, we are reminded how we show up matters, and God is found in the showing up in community. How will we receive these blessings? Where will we we be invited to show up in connection? May we be open to the world flipping upside down, backwards, inside out, May our eyes be open to encountering God in the people and places we might otherwise overlook. And may we have margins in our heart and schedules to be present to God's invitations in the here and now. And when we are weary and wondering if showing up matters, remind us again and again that it does, and that you, God, are with us and faithful. May we live as a people who believe that the world could be something different, with the courage to dream of a new way. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing.
We confess now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now the peace of God be with you all. Please share a sign of God's grace and peace with one another. our offering, uh, and we give thanks for all the ways uh, that you all contribute uh, to the mission and vision we have here at Mount Olivet. Um, your offering may be placed in this basket or on the welcome, in the box in the welcome counter. There's a Venmo code as well, and children are welcome to place their offerings in the basket for world hunger.
Thank you, choir. Let us pray over our offering, liberating God. You break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving. May our generosity be grounded in your justice and compassion. Amen. The Lord be with you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together now by the Holy Spirit, we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus uh, turns our priorities upside down and inside out. And instead of admonishing us, uh, Jesus invites us to come and see what goodness awaits on the other side. So this meal is offered freely and is part of that goodness. Wherever you are on your faith journey, however you come today, open your hands and receive this gift of God's grace given for you. If you are online and having communion at home, hear these words, the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ is shed for you. For those of you here, ushers will guide you forward. The wafers are gluten-free. Wine in the cups is dark in color. Juice is light. 
and you are welcome always to use the kneelers to pray after the meal. Come now, for Christ is the host of this table. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Well, we have been forgiven, and we have heard God's word spoken, and we have been fed, and now we pray as a community. Um, And we trust that when we lift up our prayers to God, uh, that God makes a way somehow, um, and that our prayers shape us and shape the world. Um, So I will begin with a short prayer this morning and then um, open it up for your prayers or whatever's on your heart. Um, If you are online, please uh, begin typing your prayers, um, and Angela is going to read those uh, before I close. So let's pray. 
Holy Jesus, uh, while we hear your words of blessing today for the poor in spirit, um, for those who mourn, for those who hunger for righteousness, for the merciful, um, and yet the daily news provides this continuous reminder that the world that we live in is not your world, um, or I should say the world that we live in does not bless as you bless. Um, And we grieve um, as a community over senseless deaths, all senseless deaths, and today we grieve over another traumatic um, senseless death of a black man, Tyree Nichols of Memphis. Um, And so God, we just lift up, um, we lift up prayers for, for him, for his family, for his friends, um, for the community of Memphis. Um, And we ask you, God, uh, that you would guide us um, or somehow use us to be part of your vision of blessing, your vision of healing and peace and racial justice in our communities. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Friends, what prayers do you have this morning? Yes, John. What is the group that you're in? Okay. Yeah, John is a longtime singer in the Plymouth Rockers, and four of their members died in the last just couple weeks. Um, and so, uh, gosh, uh, John, we give uh, we give thanks for your um, building of community in that group, um, and we just pray for those who have been lost, for their friends and family. Um, and uh, for God to come close uh, to all of them and also to the group um, in this time of, of mourning. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah, Mark. Mark prays, um, boy, every day you you open the newspaper and hear of another shooting um, for those victims of shooting in California and Georgia and all um, in Memphis and all um, all the victims and their friends and family. Um, we just pay, we pray for comfort for those um, involved and affected by uh, that kind of trauma. Um, and we just ask, God, that you give us um, some insight about how each one of us is supposed to um, work for healing and justice and uh, safety in our communities. God, in your mercy. I would like to offer a prayer for Leanna uh, Wangerin, who um, I think many of you know is uh, recovering from brain surgery. So I lift up a prayer for her, and and we just have several several folks: Kurt Holt, Ray Grindy, Tom Kappas, who are either uh, are entering some new transition in their life or um, level of care. Um, uh, Kurt is, has entered hospice. Um, I know Ray Grindy is transitioning to maybe a different care facility. Um, and Tom Kappas has um, entered memory care. So we just uh, pray for those um, in, our, in their more, uh, pray for those in our midst who um, are entering um, a transition in, in their lives. And we pray for them, for their comfort. Uh, for God to come close, and also for all the caregivers involved. God, in your mercy. And Diane asked me, Diane um, asked me to pray for her father-in-law, Everett, who's 95. I think she prayed for him last week, who, um, and he is also entering hospice, so she has left to go be with Everett. Uh, she sang in the choir today, and then went to see her dear father-in-law. So sacred time for her, 
um, and uh, comfort for Everett. God, in your mercy, hear your prayer. Prayers online? Yes, um, Sam, McLean, we uh, pray for you and your girls who have COVID. We pray for a speedy recovery for all who um, are suffering with illness during this tough season. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, receive um, all of these prayers, including the ones that we hold on our hearts. May they shape us in the world by your grace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, a few announcements before, um, before our sending him. Um, as you know, our theme for this season is find a place, and every week we've given, um, we're kind of working our way around the star, and every point we've given an invitation or an idea to try, and this week you are invited to sign up um, to attend a dinner in someone's home. So um, the fall, we, we looked for ways to be connect, to connect and be known, and we had questions and listening time, and now we're inviting you to sign up with uh, a host who's a congregation member to share a meal together. All you, you will need to sign up will be on the website shortly or talk to, oh, it's already up. See how fast she is? <laughs> um, and, or talk to Beth McGrew King. Um, I want to um, make note of two um, congregational meetings that are coming up that are important for the life of this church and important that you show up. The first one is Sunday, February 19th. Um, this will be to vote on um, approving all the proposed changes to the Constitution, which you can also read about on the website, um, and to review our 2023 budget in preparation for our annual meeting which is uh, Sunday, February 26th at noon. So please show up. Um, your presence is, uh, is needed. And then um, today, um, through the Mount Olivet Racial Equity Team, um, the Moore team is hosting another discussion, part two of Phil Vischer's Race in America video. So please, um, please head to the conference room when you are done um, to help lift up issues of racial equity and justice. With that, uh, please rise for our sending song. Receive this blessing, the God who leads you, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name. Bless your going out and your coming in today and always. Amen. Go in peace, find a place.
Thanks be to God. Thank you.